Oh, the one thing that we love to do is we love to talk about music, the way it's created, the way that it's shared, the way that it replenishes. Oh, it's just music is just something special. Arrow.net, A R R O E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 487 is with Tamus Stedman, a true modern day guitar hero. How have you been doing, sir? Oh, it's always one step at a time. How about you? Hey, brother, me too, and I fell several times, put band-aids on my knee and got back up and walked again. So <laughs> that's all you can do, man. You, you have no other choice. It's either live or die. <laughs> just, that's it. That's it, man. So that's good, man. It's good. been a long time I heard from you. Matter of fact, it's interesting. I just I just happened to be going through some uh, emails and stuff I had and stuff stored. I was trying to clean up some stores, and, and I looked, and I seen Eric Collins, me, and I'm like, Holy smokes, I've been looking for this song for like three years and I couldn't find it. And so I cut it on and rocked it for about an hour. My wife said, when did you do this? And I was like, this is Arrow. I said, have we done it a couple of years ago? And I said, um, I'm not really sure what all was done with it. I said, but it was really a clever idea and it, and it worked out great. But uh, I finally found it and I stored it and kept it. So it'll always be on my files. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's you know, you, you know, music because you play it. I mean, it's one of those things where you go into the studio and, and you build and a lot. And I, yeah. listeners don't understand the building process of music. No, they don't. They don't. And it takes it's not only in the studio, but even uh, collectively in your mind as you go through the day and you're thinking about these projects or whatever you're doing, those things are stored too. And they, I mean, it's constant. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's nothing but a constant motivation or a movement in your brain some way. And then physically it's transferred. So yeah, I get it, man. <laughs> well, that, that's the reason why I created the iHeart channel. Creativity is so, an addiction. Anyways, and it, it is, man. It is. I mean, and, and you, the thing you have to do is you have to learn how to live with it, communicate with it, build with it. Right, right, right. And, and you know, even with my guitar building, so uh, that's really strange how all this happened, man. Um, three years ago, and I don't know what part you want to start on this, but um, um, three years ago, I had uh, no idea what, what was to come. It was one of those things where I'd always tinkered with guitars um, and just kind of fooled around with them, tore them apart. For, as a kid, I got in trouble a lot. Uh, my dad beat my tail because I tore away, I tore up my first guitar. I didn't tear it up, but I tore it apart to find out what made it work. And and I never did understand all of it when I looked at it, but I just wanted to look at it. And I burnt that image in my mind years ago when I looked at my first Fender Stratocaster and tried to figure out, you know, what wire went where and what done this, and how did that work? And still didn't conceive any of it. Um, I just knew that it made a sound that moved something inside of me, and mm -hmm. I had to find out what that was. And um, so basically it all started three years ago from a dream. I woke up, um, actually not three years ago, nine years ago. Um, me, Jim, and Alan had done a project with Lisa Lucian. You remember that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we went and played the Tosca Music Party with John, um, and that was a big event and we played it, had a great time and I, you know, went on back home, but basically a couple of months later, I had this crazy dream that I was there again with them uh -oh. and we were doing, we were doing this show again, but people were coming up to me and saying, man, that guitar is far out. Where did you get this? And I'm like, it's kind of like punching underwater. Uh, that's a, <laughs> a, a, that's a line from John Mayer's song, but I couldn't answer it. I couldn't get to the, the conclusion of what what i was seeing and what i was doing and i was like I, I have no idea we played the show at the end of the night i went to john and i said john this guitar does not belong to me and i think I, somebody handed it to me i think i'm not really sure and i need to get it back to its rightful owner and he said well man just put it in the case and take it home if somebody calls me i'll let you know so i kept looking at it in the case in the back i still remember the back of the stage looking at it and thinking you know where the hell did this come from and i went i woke up and seven years passed, and I never thought about that dream again until three years ago on August the 26th. I dream partial bits of it again. I really think Yahweh just wanted to remind me that he yep. had something in store for me, yep. that old men uh, dream dreams and young men see visions. And I think I'm a combination of both because I'm at the middle age of young and old at the same <laughs> time. So I got both of the you know best of the worlds, but it was one of those things where um, – I got up in the middle of the night, started digging through my wife's Christmas wrapping paper, looking for freaking scotch tape, and, and I couldn't find it, you know, and and I finally found a piece. 
went in my daughter's room at 2.30, like I said, 3 a.m., somewhere in there, got some college old notebook paper. I still have the drawing. And I drew my first guitar body that I saw in that vision. Wow. wow. Got up the next morning, looked at it, and I said, I have no idea what I have done, uh, but I have to follow this and find out what it is. And so the job that I currently work, day job, um, I meet a lot of uh, clients and stuff that I take care of. And, I, and, and this young lady that does crafts, I was telling her about I was wanting to build this crazy looking guitar and she said well and I was also working on a, a Fender Telecaster for somebody and I said I need a piece of really thin wood uh, to do a pit guard and she said well go to Clutch Lumber Company well I get there <clears throat> turns out excuse me that it's a young man that I went to Christian school with Charles Klutz and I'm describing what I'm doing he said what are you what, are you building your own brand I'm like no no I'm just kind of doing the copycat thing and I said but um, I said, I've got this crazy design. And I said, but the woods I'll never find. And he said, what kind of woods? And I said, it's it's exotic woods, I think. Flame maples and different kinds. He said, you know, he said, come over here with me. And he took me to another part of the warehouse and opened up. It was like a candy store moment <laughs> where you walk in and find the fireballs and the gumballs like, oh, my God. And he said, look at this. And I was like, Charles. How long? He said, man, I just started carrying this a year ago. Everything was being set up for me mm -hmm. along the way um, in the stars alignment, whatever you want to call it, God, Yahweh. Um, I call him Unelahi, and that's Cherokee for the great spirit. But, you know, it all moved into place. I bought, I literally did not leave there until I, I bought my first six-foot piece of mahogany and two six-foot pieces of maple or eight-foot wow. piece. And, and I went home, looked at it put them together, started moving, and it all started coming to me. And I, I didn't realize that it wasn't me that was coming up with these ideas. I was getting downloaded mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what needed to happen in my life to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And at some point uh, in my stubbornness, I literally had to come to terms that I was not in control of this anymore. And I was like, this is a creative part of my art form that, you know, as, kid, as a kid, I drew a lot. Uh, I colored. Um, I like to uh, mess in my grandfather's little shop and, you know, cut stuff and grind on stuff. And like I said, it was always something moving with me about putting model cars together. I was always somewhere doing something like that and trying to make something complete and re didn't realize it was creating. And um, so that happened. And I put the first body together. The beauty part about this is that I had no tools. I had a, a small, I had a small shop. I had a, a Harbor, Harbor Freight drill, um, and a jigsaw, and I cut my first body with a jigsaw, and I, that was the worst thing I probably ever experienced <laughs> because it'll beat your arm to death. But long story short, I cut the body. Um, I started buying some stuff here and there, sandpaper, different things. I didn't have any money for big tools. We had a young man in our church that come up to my wife on Wednesday night. I wasn't even there, and he was sort of full of tears and he said tina i've got to tell you something that i feel like the lord has downloaded to me to tell you and your husband and he said you guys are fixing to get blessed and and she said what do you mean he said well financially you're going to move into a realm of blessing that you've never seen before but wow. it's going to require it's going to require a little work and he said i don't even know what it is i'm just telling you what i've been told to tell you she comes home and tells me that and i'm just okay that's great you know hallelujah We'll, uh, we'll move into it, see what happens. And little did I know that it was, uh, so I got curious about that and I had to call the guy. And we started talking and he said, you know, the more I've, t I've thought about it after talking to her, he said, I started getting other things that um, you will start receiving um, some type of, he said, I don't know if it's machinery, I don't know if it's resource or what it is but you're not going to have to pay for a whole lot of whatever it is you need to get started and it's going to happen. And I thought, okay, this, this guy's, I, I, he's a great guy, but I'm like, I don't know where he's coming with this. And it right. kind of sounds strange. And I'm not really sure I'm on the faith train with him. And all of a sudden I start telling my stories, to some people and, and these connections start coming. A guy calls me and said, Hey, I got a piece of equipment I don't use anymore. Would you like to have it? And it started coming a bandsaw that yes, I needed. That yeah. Was, yeah, you know, a bandsaw. I, the job I'm at, my boss put out a contest and said, hey, whoever can sell the most of this wins $200, whatever. 
subsequently the bandsaw was 200 bucks and it was right down the road from my house um that man paid for that bandsaw for me for that contest it was just piece after piece after piece a man in our church gave me some very high dollar stuff jet is the name brand he gave me a lay he gave me an incline sander he I, i started receiving stuff man it was crazy i bought a few pieces here and there but it just started developing and i started seeing the pattern of um me walking in the blessing that was designed for me. Mm-hmm. And this is this is all this is about. The creating, building the guitars is the leftover fun I get to have. Me paying attention to what's being told to me is the art form. Yep, yep. Honest to God, it really is. It's an art form to be able to sit still long enough <laughs> and hear a higher power tell you, yes, no, wait. <laughs> it, it's religion has, Western theology has really screwed us up. And I'll go back to some of my, I've been going back to a lot of the, the you know, the spiritual stuff that the Cherokees oh, yeah. um, looked at and, and um, you know, started really researching some of that stuff and realizing that a lot of this stuff is by divine appointment, but it also is in my DNA from generations back where those cats used to make wooden tools to dig the ground with and cut out boats, to, you know, to float down the river in. And, you know, they made flutes to play at their ceremonies or whatever those things were in a peace pipe to smoke. And, you know, all those things of creativity started in the Indian culture in my bloodline. And I realized then this is God and this is DNA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have to move in it and fully develop. The fun part about all this was is when I realized what I had, um, I asked Yahweh, what am I going to name this business if I really go forward with this? And. And he said, you'll name it the middle name that you absolutely did not want to tell anybody your whole life. And I'm like, you have to be kidding me. Yeah. And I'm like, Motiga. My grandfather is the one that named me, actually. He was um, he was a well-endowed uh, Indian uh, preacher, and they used to go to the reservations, him and my dad, and play music for those guys up there in Cherokee before it really got blown out of proportion and developed. And that was the culture they had back then was just worship and and uh, my grandfather wanted to name the first son that was born uh, from my father. So I was it. And he named me Tama, which is Crash of Thunder. Motiga means new arrow. And then Steadman was supposedly the name for keeper of the horses in the Cherokee culture. So a lot of those things developed out of that. I didn't know in 1968 when I took that name that it was going to carry me to 54 years later where I would actually start a business with the middle name that I really didn't like telling anybody <laughs> because I got picked on. Yeah, right. I got picked on a lot, and, you know, I was the boy named Sue. So it was fun, man. But when I when I heard that ring and I said, Motiga, what? And and it just, well, you, you're a custom builder. You customize stuff. Right. And, and it just, I put the Z on the end of it. And I never looked back from that. Even when I said it, it had a new meaning to it. It had a new ring to it. It didn't bother me anymore. I wasn't ashamed to say it. It wasn't shame, but it was one of those things where, you know, after you take so many kicks on something, then you kind of stay away from that area. Mm -hmm. You don't really talk about it. But uh, I named it that, man, and it's just developed and developed and developed. And I had, um, you know, I felt to honor our veterans um, two years ago, and I gave away a guitar, raised about $3,400, I think, $3,200. And that organization took and put furniture in some vets' houses that they were able to establish for those guys. And, um, you know, that was a great moment, but it that wasn't really about giving a guitar away. It was about showing me that I was ready to enter another realm of the public uh, with this thing in a, uh, first off, in a, in a generosity type of way that people see my heart, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I actually have a good heart. And if I, you know, it's, it's a long story about giving, but we'll get into that too, but um basically that's where it started and i and i had the vision when i was set up at that table that day at that big venue i realized then that this is my confidence uh being tested do i feel brave enough to stand in front of this table and say this is mine i made it right look at it uh get what you need to take from it does it make you look twice or does it just make you walk by and it's Mm -hmm. not for everybody I, i did learn that um, I became easily offended the first couple of hours I was in that thing because people walked by and looked at eh, and you know, kind of look at it and walk off. And then there were some people that just captured them 
and they had to stop and talk about it. And I realized then, he, God just said, it's not for everybody, son. It's going to be for the ones that are chosen for this, and that's going to be it. And it will carry you and your family into some legacy um, promises and blessings that are coming down through the line, just as it came from, you know, five generations before you. Right. And that's kind of where it all went, man. And, it, and I realized that guitar building is the fun part. But understanding how to be obedient, listen, learn, cultivate, harvest, just make things happen uh, with the knowledge and the power that I've learned. I have no luthier skills as far as uh, being to school. I don't have certificates. Um, I will say that just recently a young man was placed in my life through a purchase online uh, for some rings that go around the pickups, and he's out of Delaware. And come to find out, um, I called him Thanksgiving last year. He never returned the call. January 1st, he calls me and says, man, I'm terrible about calling people back. What can I do for you? And I was like, wow, I didn't three months. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the beauty of that was is I had to wait because God had to work on this man's heart. Yep. And in that process, this man started talking to me and talking to me, and he just connected with me in a brotherly love and his name's dennis mcpherson he owns mcpherson guitar works out of delaware and super great guy um he saw my vision started you know watching me on facebook and doing stuff and we exchanged numbers and uh, have become really good friends his dream was in 2005 he walked away from a big corporate job and his wife i think worked some or was a nurse or something i'm not really sure the whole story but she worked and he said, God told him to uh, step away from corporate and start that business. And he said it was rough a couple of months or whatever, but he got through it. And now, you know, he's built for the Jonas Brothers. He's built for several other acts. Um, and with that said, this man has actually built me stuff and sent it to me and never put a bill of lading in the box. And I'm like, Dennis, I owe you money for this. And he won't take a dime for it right now. <laughs> And I'm like, you can't do that. And he says, I, I have to do this right now because I was in your shoes in 2005 and giving open hand is the first key. Yep. That's the first paycheck for you. So long story short, there was a young man that came in my life uh, through my church family and stuff. Uh, Eddie James ministry was a um, um, singing and uh, well, it's actually a home I think uh, somewhere up north that this young man has a singing group and has dancers and singers and he helps get broken people off the street drugs all that stuff and really a kind man a generous man loves the Lord and, and it just or, he's just great he had a guitar player that was in a service big guy six foot six big fella I'm talking about huge and I saw the guitar he was playing and I thought it was an old piece of junk but it actually was something somebody had customized and I guess and made look vintage and but during that service um I felt a nudge in my in my gut that said give him your new Paul Reed Smith he needs it and I looked over at my wife and I said honey I just bought this Paul Reed Smith to, to I played a couple of things with uh, Britt Nicole she's a good friend of mine she's a Christian contemporary artist and we had done a couple of gigs with her and I had bought that guitar actually with some of the money I made at the studio off of uh, Lisa's album and some other stuff. And I just, I, I couldn't get past it. So the whole service went to this, to the very end of it. Um, I had not given the guitar. I'd watched them load up and they were ready to go. And they had to be in Kentucky eight hours later mm -hmm. to set up for a new thing. And I basically made it out the door to stop the van just about without running over me. And Eddie said, what in the world? He threw his hands up. I said, I have to see your guitar player. And he got him out. He piled out of the van. And I said, sir, I don't even know who you are. I said, but I felt like I was supposed to do this. And I handed him the guitar. I gave him a hug. And I turned around and walked away. Oh, man. He had no idea who I was. He had to research that. He found me on Facebook. And he called me and thanked me. And he said, man, you, you don't even know what that done for me. And I said, well, you don't know what it done for me. <laughs> I, haven't even, I haven't even seen it yet. So I just know that I gave you something that cost me a lot of money. And, and I just feel like that one day it's coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. we, me and this young man became close. And I found out that um, his dad had shot and killed his mom when he was young. Oh. And his dad was in jail. He'd been raised by grand grandparents and family and stuff like that. And he really had a super sweet soul. 
caring, loving guy, gentle. Just I, With all he'd been through, there's no way I could have been that peaceful. And I didn't know the struggles he dealt with in that, and we later later conveyed all that to me. And I learned that I needed to be I – I have all the daughters, no boys, and I I felt like I was supposed to be like a mentor, a father figure for him. And I just asked him one day, I said, Larry, do you mind if I call you son? <laughs> and he said, absolutely not. He said, can I call you pops? And I said, yes, you can. That was about five, six years ago, man. And in between that, I'd give him guitars. I'd give him a, a Strat that came out of the studio that was given to me by Alan. And um, there was some other stuff. He actually sent me a guitar. had been in a wreck. I kept it for about five years and, and uh, in a box. It had been tore up. And I, one day, God spoke to me and said, put that together and send it back to him. Mm. So I built it. Uh, I built it, sent it back to him. He wound up playing on a video. I don't remember the name of the song, but it was with uh, John P. Key, Kirk Franklin, and Travis Green. There's wow. a video that he's playing the guitar in. So there was blessing number one, seeing that guitar on the screen, realizing that I'd sewed in that boy's life. I was going to get sewn back in, too. Um, so just recently, in all this greatness of building and, and just creating and seeing different things when i go to the wood shop i I see things when i pull wood out and i I can actually see the guitars built Mm -hmm. when i pull the wood out and see into the grain and what's going on it's just a vision that i can't explain almost like a 5d uh dimension that i can see in when i'm doing this he calls me um three weeks ago and i had just built a guitar for an artist named Derek daisy i think you know him um Derek's been in the studio and recorded some stuff. I did some work on his album uh, called All Behind Me. Mm-hmm. Um, brilliant young man. He lives in uh, South Carolina. We had just built a gold top for him. And he said, if you can build it, uh, a gold top with the flame of the wood showing through, he said, I'll buy it from you. And I said, I have no idea how I'm going to make that happen. But <laughs> I spent a month. I, said, I spent a month researching it, and it happened. <laughs> um, he's got the guitar right now and just actually posted some stuff on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram that he's really pleased with it. And um, I've done some stuff for him. Um, I've got some other guitars I've built that I've not. I'm actually just got blessed with an opportunity. There's a new music store opening in downtown Kannapolis where it's really bursting with growth. And uh, my wife sent me a picture of this guy one day, set up at a, a event downtown. And it was J. King Guitars. And uh, I kind of, I kind of was like, "Well, he's a new kid here. Let's see what's going on." And and I thought, "Well, I'm gonna check him out." And I did. That turned into a opportunity to put a couple of my custom builds in his shop downtown wow. Kannapolis. Wow. September third, yeah. But the kicker is, is I'm sitting at my dinner table on a Sunday morning about three weeks ago, and I get up the text, and it's from my son, so to speak, Larry, and. It's a phone number, and I look at the name, and I said, I don't know who that is. I said, it's probably one of his friends wanting a guitar or price or something. Didn't open it up, and um, he calls me about 20 minutes later. He said, Pops, did you get that number? And I said, I did. I said, who is that? And he said, man, you will want to call that. And I'm like, okay, um, who is it? And he said, well, I picked the guy up at the airport and started talking to him. He's a musician. And uh, I said, okay. He's wanting to look at some guitars. He said, yes, very much so. I said, all right, who is it? And he said, well, open it up and look at it. And he told this young man um, my story, working, raising four dollars, dreaming, building, you know, a studio musician. I'm not really playing anywhere right now, but I'm just doing whatever I, what, what moves me. And mm-hmm. and this guy is touched by it, and he says, I have to talk to this man. Um, I really want to help him. And he said, well, how are you going to help him? He said, well, he said, I I travel a lot. And he said, okay. And he said, what band are you with? And he said, I'm the lead guitarist for the Marshall Tucker band. Yep, yep, (laughs) yep. So here's the story. If you're going to do a murder, uh, if we're going to search a murder out, you know, those guys investigate. They'll put a little pin on the chalkboard, and they'll run a string over to this This side and over to this (laughs) string and over to this string. So 12 years ago, when I gave that guitar away, that cost me a lot of money. I had no idea that 12 years later, it was going to bring a blessing to me, putting me in the pocket of something that's going to be seen nationwide, not in a guitar store, not on a catalog page. I'm not going to have to run to, you know, a bunch of different uh, avenues to market my stuff. I got a man that called me on the phone. I called him. He didn't answer, but he called right back and said, I'm in South Dakota. I love your story. I love your passion. I want to help you. 
And I said, how, how is that? He said, well, I don't want the guitar free. I just want you to build something really cool for me, give it to me to travel with, and I'm going to show it at every concert that I play at. And he said, I'm, I'm around Leonard Skinner all the time. I used to play for him. Uh, we're on tour right now with our 50th anniversary. Yep. Um, he said, the Outlaws. He said, there's so many bands that I'm connected to and so many musicians I know. I want to help you get your dream finalized into a position where it brings you you know, a, a, a piece of in being of who you really are. And also it's going to financially um, help you a great bit. He said, because I believe what you're doing, you've, you've fully vested into it, but you're having a, a, a big distraction of working a day job. <laughs> and he said, I think you need to be in this vehicle. And he said, I have the vehicle to make it happen. And he said, I just want to, you know, see it happen. So he calls me back two weeks later and says, I want you to build me whatever you want to build. I'm not going to um, try to pinpoint anything. He just told me kind of what he wanted. And I said, okay, Chris, I got his name's Chris Hicks. Um, he's been around for 28 years, I think, with the Marshall Tucker Band. Wow. Um, he had left the Outlaws and came on board with those guys and played for Skinner, I think, in 94, 95 for a little bit. Um, he's good. To, he was good friends with Huey Thomason. Um, he, he knows Dickie Betts personally. Oh, yeah. He's got the, he's got the phone number, sir. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got the numbers. I just have to be able to build what these guys would really enjoy playing. And so far, what I'm building, everybody just touched him and said, man, I've never felt anything that played like this. Before I build from anybody, I usually research them a little bit, especially if they're famous, like this guy, uh, or not famous, but well-known. Um, but, you know, on a, a, a personal level, if there's a man that comes to me, I'm going to question him things. What do you like to play? What's your style of music? What what method do you pick? How do you pick? How do you hold the guitar? There's so many things that I'll try to uh, dissect and find out how their habits are to find out how they need to build a guitar, right. which guitar body style they need and what pickups they need and all that. But really, man, that's the, that's the fun part of it is um, – is just finding out all the details about these things and getting to pick the wood and all that. That's just like me going to this canvas and breaking out the brush <laughs> and, and just slinging paint somewhere, man, and making it look like something that only I can see, but somebody else will see it. Not everybody's going to see it, but somebody will have the same eye, the same dimension that I have when they look at one of my pieces and say, I get what this guy's doing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not it's not a Fender Stratocaster, it's not a Gibson Les Paul, it's not an Ibanez, it's not, you know, a Gretsch. Uh, it's this dude's all by himself. Wow. And that's where I want to be. Um, I have I have an entourage uh, behind me, that's for sure. I've I've got people that are backing me right now that believe in what I'm doing. But by myself, I'm standing alone uh, with a lot of support from my family. Um, my daughters, you know, they support me. My wife fully supports me. I got friends and, and family that have really watched this develop, and they see that this is a magic that only God can produce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of the whole story. If I can actually make people believe that there's something somewhere besides this dirt we're standing on that cares about us enough to push us into some areas in life that we've never seen before, and religion tries to do that with don't, don't, don't. You can't do that. You can do that. You have to look this way. You have to do that. No, you don't. You have to be who God designed you to be. You have to open your heart, listen to him, and the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly what to do. Because I have living proof today standing on my front porch talking to you that if you listen, he'll tell you exactly what to do. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's been a beautiful story, man. I just um, I can't wait to see where it goes. And um I don't know who I'm going to meet along the way. I never thought I would meet a, a a young man playing with a rock band that's probably one of the longest running rock bands in the world. Um, you've got Skinner, you've got Marshall Tucker, you've got Foreigner, you got Journey. These guys have been around forty plus years, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And how a man sitting at his table dreaming in a little small building in his backyard <laughs> can connect with something like that? There is nothing but appointment written all over it, and I had to show up for it.
Yep, yep. We've got to we've got to have a continuation to this to this podcast okay. and your story. And the reason why is because I I, I want to make sure. I mean, if Def Leppard's going to call me up nine times and we have a conversation, I I want mm-hmm. I, I want your story to be a part of that as well. Because okay. I mean, because the your process and your personal growth is because what you, what you're creating is everything that I've always said. We have got to learn how to drop the four walls of the church and get on the street. Well, what yes, you've sir. done is you've provided a tool for other travelers to communicate with others yes yes you're, you're dead on man <laughs> you're dead on and this just doesn't involve me the beauty about this is is uh i even thought about this i said god what if this is not even about me and now yeah. that's a doorstop that's a doorstopper right there that'll make you take the key out of the lock and say wait a minute i don't know about this but i have matured enough in my spirit now yep that i realize that if i'm just developing all this for one of my daughters to pick it up, which I have a daughter that is musically inclined, artistic as I don't know what, um, and she loves being around me. She's my die. She's my ride or die. We, you know, she's dad. Let's go fishing. When I, we're leaving somewhere in more than one vehicle, she's the one that jumps in the front seat of my truck or my car or whatever I'm in, and the other ones ride with mom. And, and you know, they all love me, but. This young lady, um, when she was eight weeks old, um, she stopped breathing. Mm. And she was purple when we found her in her crib. We had just brought her home eight weeks earlier. My wife gave birth to her, and she was asphyxiated. Somehow or another, we found out later. But I just happened to feel a nudge to go by and check on her, and I usually didn't because she was taking a nap. She stopped breathing, and her pulse was very low, very, very low. And we called 911, and... They said, you're going to have to perform C- CPR. And I'm like, honey, I'm six foot and 300 pounds. There's no way I can do this to a small baby that I can hold in one hand. They said, you're going to have to. Mm. And so I performed CPR on the child. Um, she became uh, coherent again, was breathing. We rushed her to the hospital. No damage that we know done. But I knew right then that there was something special about this chick that there was another part of an enemy that did not want her to exist because right. he knew she was going to do great things through me, I think, and um, and through him. And, and we have that connection. She's creative. She play, She's literally every day playing her guitar, walking around the house. <laughs> Dad, listen to this song. How do you play this? You know, she knows who I am now. And she's just sort of my... Um, I don't know. I could, she's my sidekick, but <laughs> I, you know, I even asked, I said, well, God, I don't have any, a girl's could don't build guitars. And I realized then he said, but you don't put limits on me. Mm. I, I'll use whoever I need to use. If it's a girl, if it's, you know, a boy, he said, but you got to understand this. She's going to have children one day and she may have a grandson that sees your vision and your dream and what you're doing. And she already sees it. Mm-hmm. So she may be able to be, a, be able to have the resource to give him the knowledge uh, the wealth will already be there, and I can put this into a legacy form to where through the generations, what I'm doing right now might bring me a little notoriety, might bring me a little pocket walking around money. It might be all good for a little while. That's okay. I'm actually okay with that if I don't make it in that source uh, as far as you know being well-known and all that. Mm-hmm. But what I do care about is if those kids can take it and run with it, and I leave them a legacy that they can actually – provide for their family for the rest of their lives and their grandchildren and their grandchildren. Leo Fender done it. Yeah. Orville Gibson done it. You know, there, there's ways to do it. It can be done. It's been done through the generations, but that's where I'm at. I really enjoy building. I really enjoy uh, working toward building a future for the ones coming behind me. Um, and it's going to be good. That's all I know. Yeah. That's all yeah. I know. What's your website so listeners can go to the website and, 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 you know, connect up to your energy? Right now, we are working on a website. I don't have it fully developed yet because there's so many um, things that I want to make um, available on that website. So we're still working on that. Right now, the only thing I have is my Facebook page, Motiga Customs, and then I have an Instagram page, um, also Motiga Customs. But we're working on that. We've got a a young man that's working on our website right now. I'm trying to get it detailed to where you can go through, select what type of woods you want to use that I I fancy myself and and love to build with, uh, and I know which ones hold the best tone. I'm just not going to allow any type of wood to come through i'm going to make it precise so we're still working on that uh bear with us with that but we will have that developed within the year i think uh and then we can kind of customize it to where somebody can just say hey 
I'd like to put this together. Let's see what it looks like, and, and we can have a conversation on the phone personally or if I have to, you know, fly, drive, whatever it is to meet somebody. If it's uh, within reason of that, then that's what we'll do. But, uh, yeah, we are developing one. It's coming. Um, but we've just right now we're at a standstill on some components of that that we need to get worked out. I love it. I love it, man. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. You know, the door is always going to be open for you. Yes, sir. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Ari. You're such a great, uh, writer and, uh, my God, you're a theologian as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I've always loved your, um, your insight on stuff. We follow you guys on, on Facebook and different things. And, and we're on the same, we're of the same class. I, I know we are. Absolutely. I know we are. Excellent. Yep. Well, go back to your family and you be brilliant today. Okay, sir. I will, sir. And you as well. Work hard and we'll see you soon.